there was this man at the grocery store. He would keep telling me there was something on my shoe, or that my shoes were untied, to try to get me to bend over. This went on for a few months, every so often, until one day I snapped at him. I was in a turquoise skirt that day and he told me I had something on my butt. I flipped out. He ran away, embarrassed I thought, and then a few weeks later my coworker saw him taking pictures of me from across the street while getting in and out of my car. I called the police. The next day, my boyfriend arrived at the same grocery store with me, and there he was. He told the guy off, and the guy said, sorry man. Guess I'll just have to keep dreaming about her in that blue skirt. I moved and changed jobs ever since. End quote. Welcome back. Dark Recaps here wishing you a haunted new year. Hit that like button and subscribe for more creepy true stories in 2023. Let's continue. The Stalker Ex-Husband Quote When my mother divorced her second husband after a very brief five-month marriage, he stalked us almost immediately. I was 12 years old, and my little sister was nine. He was caught trying to cut the phone lines underneath our home, presumably to keep us from calling the police. This was before cell phones. He would show up randomly in public places, trying to skirt the restraining order placed on him after the break-in incident. For instance, we once went to the public library, and he was standing down one of the aisles, just staring at us. After my mother had changed her number and made it unlisted, he began going to any place he could think of to try and obtain it. Blockbuster video, the library, cable companies, etc. We had already called everyone who had our number and told them not to give it out, but that didn't stop him from trying. This continued for about a year, until a judge finally got fed up with this guy and issued a lifetime peace bond against him. Essentially, if he comes within a hair's breadth of violating the bond, he's in jail, almost no questions asked. Thankfully, we haven't seen him in decades now. It was terrifying to be a young woman, in a family of young women, having this hostile shadow lurking around the corner. It took years before I felt completely comfortable again. End quote. The Stalker Ex-Boyfriend Quote. When I was like 14, a freshman in high school, I briefly dated this guy for a few weeks until he started showing up everywhere he knew I'd be, like my classes, dance practice, etc. He wanted us to spend every waking minute either together, talking on the phone, or texting. It was making me really uncomfortable so I broke up with him, thinking that would solve the problem. But then he would call or text all day every day trying to convince me to get back together with him. When I started ignoring him, he would escalate, which eventually led to him threatening me with murder or suicide. This was back in the day before smartphones, so I couldn't just block his number. I ended up having to change my phone number because the stress of seeing 30 new messages from the guy, who literally threatened to kill me, was getting to me. Nevertheless, he would still randomly show up in places where he knew I'd be. Luckily, this always seemed to happen in public with other people around, so he never actually approached me. After about a year of this, he finally just gave up. He was older than me so he graduated that year and moved away, with that I kind of forgot about him. That was like 13 years ago. He tried to add me on Facebook a few months ago, which made me realize I never blocked him. I wasn't on Facebook or anything back then, it was like 2005, so it never occurred to me. He's blocked now though. It's made me really paranoid about what you can find about me online, hence the throwaway. Apparently my name and address is publicly available online through the county assessor's website, because my husband and I own our house. So now I'm wondering if he's smart enough to figure that out. Now that I'm an adult, I regret that I never went to the police or school authorities. I think I was afraid that they'd accuse me of lying or leading him on or something. 
He was an upperclassman and on the varsity basketball team, so I guess I thought no one would really believe that he would even be interested in me, an average freshman. I never even told my parents because I technically wasn't allowed to be dating, so I thought I'd get in trouble for dating him in the first place. End quote. The Stalker at the Bar Quote I had a great first date with a guy I met at my favorite bar. On our second date he showed up on drugs or something, acting really weird, jittery, and kept touching me inappropriately. I went home at the end of the night without arranging a third date, thinking I'd never see him again. I was 22 and freaked out by his behavior, so instead of telling him I wasn't interested, I gave him the wrong number. A couple weeks later, my friends and I went out to the bar for drinks and the bouncer pulled me aside. Hey, some guy has been here every night lately, asking for you. I was so confused. It was a weird thing to be told, and I had no idea what guy that could be. About an hour later, this guy shows up, still looking for me again. He sat his butt right down at the table with me and my friends, much to our dismay. He wouldn't leave me alone. We left for another bar, and he followed us there. When he asked for my number again, I got fed up and told him I flat out wasn't interested and refused to give him my information. My bar figured out what was up and stopped letting him in, so I was safe there. However, he lived about a block away. For the next two years, every time I went to a concert or a bar in that neighborhood, I was rolling the dice that he'd turn up. If he spotted me, he'd follow me around the rest of the night until I went home. No matter how much I told him to buzz off, he just kept trying. One night, I was out watching a friend's band. He poked his head in the door and spotted me, and stuck to my side like a burr, no matter what I did. Eventually, another guy asked me to dance, so I took the offer. The second guy went in for a kiss, and at first I declined, still trying to save the stalker's feelings a bit. But when he asked again, I said sure. When I came up for air a couple minutes later, the stalker boy had left, and I never saw him again. Thank God. End quote. The High School Stalker Quote I was in high school and a kid was in my art class. He decided to walk me to my classes and call me every once in a while. I was young so I liked the attention, and while I wasn't interested, I didn't see much harm in what he was doing. I realized he was crazy when I kept getting Facebook messages from his account, claiming to be his girlfriend living six hours away and how he was cheating on her with me. I decided to tell him to leave me alone, because I didn't want to be a part of all the craziness. He started being obsessive and followed me around. Next thing I know he is writing me raps, like his own rap music that he was writing for me. I ignored him because that was way too intense for me, and I stopped responding to any contact in person or anything else. Fast forward a few weeks and I am studying for my trigonometry exam, in my room. I hear little pecks hitting something, but it was nice out and I live fairly close to the city so there are always noises. Next thing I know, I hear louder plops on my window. My mom and brother run into my room as I see a large white ball of fabric plop against my window. He had been looking into the downstairs windows and decided to start throwing pebbles from my neighbor's driveway to my second story window. We never took the same bus and I never told him where I lived, but somehow he was throwing the shirt off his back at my bedroom window. My mom had called the cops because she didn't want to confront him herself. They confirmed he was looking for me, as he claimed that he had an argument with his mom, and allegedly I told him he could live at my house for a while. None of that was true. They sent him home. The next day we learned that he was suspended from school for a different reason. I was in the art room which has large glass window walls. I looked up midway through the period and he was riding his bike around the classroom, looking for me. Because he was suspended, the school kicked him off the property. After that, 
I only saw him once and decided to keep a fat distance. I'm super cautious about personal information now. I still have no idea how he found out where I lived. End quote. Hope he doesn't find me. Quote. I'm just so afraid he will find me on Reddit, so I won't go into much detail. We were both rejects at our school. We were not friends, but one year, our locker was next to each other. We started to talk. He was definitively weird and shy. But eh, I was the weirdo of my class too. He was more talkative online. He was more of an internet friend than anything else. As we grew up, I matured and he did not. I made friends in high school, had a boyfriend, which he hated and I was less and less online. He resented me for not being online enough, not taking time to text him back. He was getting weirder and weirder. It was awkward being around him and, sometimes, I wasn't sure I was feeling safe. I was somewhat his closest friend, and I was still seeing him because of pity. When I was seeing him, I was counting time before it was appropriate to leave. Once, I lied and found an excuse to leave earlier. Life went its course, I grew apart from my high school friends but him. I tried to ghost him, slowly, but he was making me feel guilty, so I never 100% cut ties. Stalking behavior grew as I was making more distance between us. Non-stop texting even without giving a response for months. He found my new address and I won't go into details here. Once, he showed up at a bus stop, a few hours away from his place. He surprise hugged me from behind. That was scary as hell. I also found out he had a large collection of memorabilia of mine. It stopped after alerting the police many times. End quote. Stalker journalist. Quote. I was 17 and met him at a friend's party. We chatted and he was very flattery, which the young teenager in me just ate up. However, I suppose as a means to impress me, he almost braggingly tells me he's 29, a sports journalist, and I am immediately turned off and a little creeped out, because I was certainly not feeling the age difference. I let the conversation sizzle out and go hang with someone else. We leave and I think that's the last I'll see of him. He proceeds to get my number from someone else at the party, and then harasses me via text and calls for a month. Thoroughly skeeved out, I try to let him down as easily as I can, but he continues to threaten to find me and force me to go out with him. Then this turns into threats of assault, talking in detail about how I promise to go out and I can't back out, even if he has to make me do it himself by waiting for me outside of my school, putting me in a chokehold and dragging me out for coffee. I never promised anything. He would give me upwards of 50 calls a day from a hidden number and countless horrible texts. I begged him to just leave me alone countless times. I was too afraid to tell my parents, and my friends thought it was funny. One day, he just sent me a, lol, it was just a joke, you really thought I was serious, got you. After that he just immediately stopped forever. End quote. Let me know in the comments if you have ever experienced something disturbing like this. I'd be interested to read about your experience. Thanks for watching and please consider leaving a like on this video. If you enjoy the content, hitting that subscribe button doesn't cost you anything. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.